Okay, so we're going to uh, make a Baker's Canvas setup. So obviously a new file, save it to start. Um, oh, sure. Let's just um, a new folder called um, video. Video. Let's just call it um, setup.html. Okay, so here we go. Um, So when we start, okay, we're going to obviously start a little bit like a web document. So exclamation mark. Well, it is a web document. Sorry. So exactly like a web document. Um, right. Okay. Doesn't really need a lot of much of anything. Oops. But we need the canvas tag. And it needs to have a ID. And we're going to call this um, game canvas. Uh, we need a width and a height, um, which unfortunately can't really be by percentage. So we we'll just say it's four hundred by four hundred. Right. Um, so in order to do this, then we need a script tag. This is where all the JavaScript magic is going to happen, is in here. So we're going to go um, var canvas, canvas, yeah, and canvas context, which we are going to define what those are now. Um, so in here, I'm sure we're doing that. We're going to say pause. Sorry, I just had to double check. Um, then again, this is this setup part is one of those things where it's once it's kind of set up, it's the thing you very uh, visit re very rarely. Window dot unload. Function equals. See, look, look, I just have to look very quickly because I'm just getting fed up with this. Oh, okay, onload function, da da da. So it's this bit here that we're after. Right, and I'm just going to be cheeky and I'll talk through it because um, rather than me having to painfully type it out the whole time. So onload equals function. So we're grabbing this canvas now and we're saying documents. So this document refers to the actual HTML document. Um, get element by ID game canvas, which is that there. So make sure your capitals are the same. Canvas context now equals the canvas that we've got by ID. Going to get a context which is now we're setting it into like a 2D type mode. And set interval is basically it's a um, a function that tells something to run a function and how often to run. So this is our basically 50 frames per second. But we're calling this function, which doesn't exist. So we need to put that function in. Function main loop all spout the same. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put in a color rect because it's all good when I'll say, yay, that's the setup, that's it. Absolute most bare bones, all you need to know. Um, but you can't really test if it's working properly until you actually put at least one thing in the canvas. So we're going to get a function called color rect because basically it's a function that draws colored rectangles, which you will use very a lot as a basic game setup for just using simple blocks. Um, right, so color rect, then we'll say, what does a color rect need? It needs an x position, a y position, a width, and a height, and a color. So what do we put in here? So this is this put the stuff inside a function. These are called parameters. So basically when we call this function, which we're going to call it up here, we can say, oh, I want you to start at the zero position, x and y, we'll start in the top left corner. We want you to be as wide as the entire canvas and as tall as the entire canvas. So canvas.height. 
and what color do we want you to be? Well, we'd be black because you're a background, okay? And then we'll just um, label it as a as a BG. Okay, so we, we want to be able to like just use the function and then just push information into these placeholders. So in here, we need to tell them what these placeholders actually are. So canvas context dot fill, uh, sorry, fill style equals our color. Canvas context dot fill rect equals uh, x position, y position, our height, our uh, width, and our height. Okay. Actually, sorry, I'll slow slow down a wee bit. Would be good. See in here. This is the joys of um, using uh, brackets. See, so Phil Rector has told you he wants the first one. It wants you to put in is the x position, which will be a number, y position a number, a width will be a number, and a height will be a number. I'm following the same order it require it asks for. If I had mixed these up and mix these up in here, and then got these put in there, it would still treat it as the start positions. It will still treat it that. I've just given it funny names. But at the end of the day, that's the order it's going to treat it in, regardless of what I call these things. So obviously, I just use the same, because why would you fight the system? Because uh, it's just going to lead to pain and heartache. Uh, right, so then I'm going to launch this. And I should have a black square. There you go. So that is a successful black square in there. Um, to test it, we can even do this and say at zero zero in the top corner, I'm going to have you be 20 pixels by 20 pixels and red because it's a short color to type in. And you're going to be the player square eventually. Save and we refresh. There's your player square. What if this was 100 squares and 100 squares across? 100, 100. Okay, so maybe we say 50 down. So to make sure that's the vertical up and down. Refresh. Yeah, it is. So X is across, Y is down. And then, yes, you've got your size here. So you could do like this. All right. And then, yeah, red. So that there is your very, very basic setup. Get your, you get your information in here. This one here, you very re, you will very rarely visit and put information in here again unless you're doing event listeners, which you've seen in another video. The main loop is where pretty much anything you want to run for the duration of the game will go. And this is the function for a color act, um, which will be the most the thing you frequently use for your objects. Now we can update them to images, which I will do another video of that at some stage. But there you go. There's your basic setup.